Attention shoppers, we now have taste in the bread aisle. Dave's Killer Bread. That's right, an organic bread that doesn't need three spoonfuls of sriracha jam to delight your taste buds. Dave's Killer Bread is a 21-grain salute to the end of boring bread. A brand on a mission to make the most out of every loaf, to rid the world of GMOs and artificial ingredients, and plant the seeds of good in all that they bake. But Dave's Killer Bread has done more than raise the bar on bread. In fact, Dave's Killer Bread was built on the belief that second chances can change lives. When its founder, Dave, the guy with the guitar you see on every loaf, returned to the family bakery after 15 years in prison. Dave took that chance and ended up creating what would become the country's number one organic bread while never forgetting his not-so-easy path. That's why at Dave's Killer Bread, they proudly practice second chance employment, hiring the best person for the job, regardless of criminal background. And by the taste of it, things have worked out rather well. Dave's Killer Bread. Bread Amplified. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, most school teachers are accustomed to early rising. But last Friday morning, our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, was awakened a little too early by her landlady, Mrs. Davis. Connie! Oh, Connie, I've got something to tell you. Are you up? I am now, Mrs. Davis. Is it 7 o'clock? No, dear, it's only 5 o'clock. I hope you didn't wake me up to tell me I've got two more hours to sleep. (laughs) Oh, certainly not. I thought I heard a noise in the kitchen. Oh? What sort of a noise? Well, uh, first I heard something that sounded like footsteps in the backyard. And then there was a sound of a pane of glass breaking. Then the window slid up. Then there were some more footsteps in the kitchen. And then there was a sound of the refrigerator being opened. Did you go into the kitchen to investigate? No, I figured it was only the cat. (laughs) Minerva? Well, she wouldn't go to the refrigerator. She likes her milk warm. It's probably just your imagination, Mrs. Davis. Now, let's go back to sleep, huh? But, Connie, as I think back, those footsteps were pretty heavy for a cat. Please, Mrs. Davis, if you're trying to frighten me into thinking there's someone in this house, you've succeeded. (laughs) Hand me my robe, please, the one on the chair with the extra heavy tassels on the belt. Here you are, Connie. I'll go put my slippers on and join you in the kitchen. All right. Well, this hallway is nice and dark. Why do they always have to put the switch on the opposite end from where you are? I'll just feel my way along the wall and... Oops! Who's that? All right, don't move now. Who are you and what are you doing in this house? I'm looking for my slippers, Connie. (laughs) Maybe they're under my bed. I'll go see. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Davis. I've got my bearings now. Here's the kitchen door. Ooh! I I beg your pardon. I didn't mean to startle you with the flashlight. It's just a tool of the trade. (laughs) If you're looking for the gas meter, it's outside. I'm not looking for the gas meter. Anybody else living here besides yourself? My landlady, Mrs. Davis. But this seems like a strange time to be taking the census. I'm not taking the census either, Miss... uh, uh... Uh, Brooks. Connie Brooks. How do you do? My name's Joe Phillips. Oh, Happy to shake your flashlight, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> if you're looking for money, I can save us both a lot of time. I'm a school teacher. Oh, no, no. I wasn't looking after money. I just broke in to raid your icebox. Of course, if I'd have known you were a school teacher, I'd have brought you a sandwich. <laughs> but I don't understand. If you're just after food, why didn't you go to a restaurant? I got a dandy answer for that one. They charge. <laughs> You see, I've been out of work for several weeks now, and since I was a kid, I've always been led to believe that starvation is a very unsatisfactory career. 
So when I'm hungry, I just take a chance and drop into various kitchens. I never heard of such a thing. Sit down at that table for a minute. I've got to hear some more about this. Oh, but you caught me red-handed. Aren't you going to call the police? The police? We're lucky if there's enough in that icebox for you and me. <laughs> of course, we just had leftovers for dinner last night, but you're welcome to some leftover leftovers. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I wasn't thinking about dinner. What I had in mind was breakfast. Oh, I'm sorry. I lost my head. I'll just step out on the back porch and get the milk. I brought it in with me. <laughs> <laughs> that was very thoughtful. Did you look around, Connie? Is everything all right? So far, so good, Mrs. Davis. This is Mr. Phillips. He's a burglar. Oh. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Phillips? Have you been here long? Not very, Mrs. Davis. Why? Because I thought I heard someone moving around in here before. Did you notice anybody? Oh, just a little cat out in the back porch. Oh, that's Minerva, but it couldn't have been Minerva because... He's a burglar. <laughs> yes. He claims he's just after our vitamins, Mrs. Davis. He doesn't seem very violent, so I thought I'd give him a bite to eat and get the rest of his story. Well, for heaven's sake, I'll put on some coffee. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. Uh, uh, could I trouble you for the address here, please? The address? Why do you want that? Yeah, seems to me you found the place all right without the address. <laughs> Well, uh, I like to jot it down in my little black book. You see, I keep a record of every kitchen I've visited. And as soon as I can afford it, I'm going to pay back everyone who's contributed to my nourishment. Yes, ma'am, I'm going to throw the biggest party you ever saw. Dinner party, huh? How many on your guest list so far? About 150 couples. <laughs> <laughs> With all those people, you'll have to break into a pretty big restaurant. Oh, that's one shindig I'm going to pay for. I realize I'll, I'll have to find a pretty good job before I can do that, but I really intend to make the effort. Well, good for you, Joe. Yeah. I, I must admit that in the past, steady work has always seemed quite repellent to me, but, well, it's the only way to get even, I guess. Mm. Give some cereal, Mr. Phillips. The coffee will be ready in a minute. Well, thank you. Tell me, Mr. Phillips, in your little food raiding expeditions, have you ever been caught before tonight? Uh, no, ma'am, uh, but I was almost caught last night. And the setup looked so lovely. It was about 7.30 in the evening. Here was this man fast asleep on a couch. Here was this big bowl of fried chicken on the table behind him. And here was this open window right near it. But just as I reached in to grab it, he woke up. You never heard such a bellowing in your life. Chased me 15 blocks before I finally shook him. Well, that's one way to work up an appetite. <laughs> chicken wasn't worth it. Things fried in deep fat murder me. <laughs> Well, look, Mr. Phillips, if you're serious about wanting to pay back your food debts, I may be able to help you. Our school custodian has been sick for a few days, and I might be able to get you a job filling in for him. Please, not while I'm eating. <laughs> Use your coffee, folks. Oh, oh, while we're on the subject of eating, Connie, I've been invited over to my sister Angela's for dinner. I'd like to ask you along, but Angela hasn't been very well lately, and I... Oh, I, I wouldn't think of bothering Angela, Mrs. Davis. Don't worry about me. I'll have a nice dinner in the drugstore. Oh, don't do that, Miss Brooks. If you're short of funds, why not have dinner with me? Thanks just the same, Mr. Phillips, but I hate to eat and run. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Well, after breakfast...
breakfast, Mr. Phillips helped with the dishes, those he didn't swallow, and we arrived at school several minutes before my first class. You are now in the hallowed halls of Madison High, Mr. Phillips. On your right is the office of our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, known to the faculty as the Lion's Den. Good morning, Miss Brooks. And directly in front of you is the Lion's Cub, Harriet. I mean, uh, <laughs> Miss Conklin, meet Mr. Phillips. Uh, hello, Miss Conklin. How do you do, Mr. Phillips? Uh, just call me Joe. All right. Then you just call me Harriet. Okay, Harriet. Now that we're all engaged... <laughs> I'd like to ask you something, Harriet. Has the custodian returned to work yet? No, Miss Brooks, he hasn't. As a matter of fact, Daddy has asked me to see that the things that need fixing around here get fixed. At least until he can get somebody to take Mr. Jensen's place. Oh, then we're just in time. You wait right here, Mr. Phillips. I'll arrange an interview with Mr. Conklin. Oh, okay, Miss Brooks. Come in. It's me, Mr. Conklin. There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Very well, Miss Brooks, but first there's something I'd like to discuss with you. It seems the salary checks have been held up this month, and, well, this is a very embarrassing statement for me to make, but I'm short of funds. If you think that's an embarrassing statement, wait till you put your next question. I'm flat broke myself. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't thinking in terms of borrowing money, Miss Brooks. Oh. But as I recall, my daughter Harriet brought you home to dinner one night last week. Now, my wife left town yesterday to visit her mother. And while I don't feel that you owe me a dinner, well, I am one up on you. <laughs> and after tonight, you'll still be one up on me. You see, Mr. Conklin, Mrs. Davis is visiting her sister tonight, and I'm going to eat in the drugstore. But about this matter of a new custodian, Mr. Conklin, I'd like Maybe to tell you about... Maybe the grocer a... would extend my credit and... Please, sir, I didn't me. finish talking. What? Oh, oh. I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. You'll have to forgive my preoccupation with the inner man, but I haven't had a square meal in two days. Last night, Martha left some delicious fried chicken for me on a table, and somebody made off with it. <laughs> well, that's too bad, sir, but... Oh, no. <laughs> did you get a good look at the man? Well, it was pretty dark, and I... How did you know it was a man? Well, if he was reaching through the window, why, it must How have... did you know <laughs> that he reached through the window? Well, it's only natural. If you were napping on the couch, there was no uh... other... How did you know I was napping? I didn't. Uh, uh, don't you always take a nap before your evening meal? Miss Brooks. <laughs> did you steal my dinner? <laughs> Mr. Conklin, how can you say such a thing? Oh, well, I, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. I, I was quite upset by the incident. I'm almost certain it was a man. I chased that thief for blocks. Well, that's one thing about the man I'd like to recommend for the custodian's job, Mr. Conklin. He's as honest as the day is long. What? You have someone to replace Mr. Jensen? Yes. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, don't stand there. Where is he? He's right outside. I'll call him. Uh. Come on in, Mr. Phillips. Mr. Conklin will see you now. Uh, thanks. Uh, this is Joe Phillips, Mr. Conklin. Well, how do you do... Say, haven't I seen you someplace before? <laughs> I was about to mention that same thing. Oh, no, I'm sure you two haven't met. Although Mr. Phillips does get around to some of our better homes. Oh. <laughs> well, probably just a coincidence. Now then, Phillips, I understand you'd like to fill in here as our temporary custodian. Uh, yes, sir. Are you a handyman with tools? You ought to see him with a knife and fork. <laughs> I'm very handy, Mr. Conklin, and hours don't mean anything to me either. You said it. If I can, if I can just take a crack at this job, I know you'll be pleased. Very well. Here are the keys to the custodian's office. Now help yourself to a pair of overalls and report back to me. You've got yourself a job. But, Mr. Conklin, uh, don't you want to ask me any questions about my background or anything? If there's one thing I have, it's an ability to judge character. <laughs> <laughs> now go, my boy, and good luck to you. Thank you, Mr. Conklin. And you too, Miss Brooks. Uh, you won't be sorry. Oh, I'm sure I won't be sorry. I can tell by looking at that fellow that he's not only competent, but honest and loyal. Now reach over to my desk and hand me the pen on it. I've got to send a memo to the board about our new custodian. Yes, sir. Oh, there's no pen on the desk, Mr. Conklin. Oh, there must be. I put it there myself, alongside of my watch. 
Watch. Now, don't tell me that's gone, too. Are you sure you put your watch on the desk, Mr. Conklin? Positive. When I came in this morning, I took it out of the little pocket in my trousers. Trousers? Yes. yes. (laughs) Trousers. And stop turning your face away. It's common courtesy to look at the person you're addressing. Frankly, Mr. Conklin, I'm afraid to look. (laughs) In spite of the circumstances under which we had met, I was determined to give Joe Phillips a chance. By lunch period, I felt confident that he was taking advantage of his chance because four desks, two sewing machines, and a typewriter were reported missing. (laughs) I didn't completely lose faith in his honesty, but it was ebbing pretty rapidly. However, when I dropped into the biology laboratory to meet Mr. Boynton for lunch, I temporarily shelved our temporary custodian. Hi, Mr. Boynton. Ready to go to lunch? Oh, I'm not going to the cafeteria today, Miss Brooks. I brought a box lunch with me. Since our salary checks were delayed this week, I'm a little short. I've attained full midgethood myself. (laughs) I'm joking, of course. I have enough money for a light lunch if you don't weigh it. Uh, Look, Miss Brooks, we've been friends a long time. I brought a very large lunchbox down today. I insist you share it with me. All right, you get in first. (laughs) I mean, you're very kind, Mr. Boynton. Oh, it's nothing at all. You're the one who's kind. Kind, considerate, and the fairest-minded person he's ever met. And that's what Mr. Phillips said about you this morning. Mr. Phillips? Our new custodian. He was in here after first period. Offered to help me clean out the lab. That's Mr. Phillips, all right. <laughs> but couldn't we talk about him later? I'm kind of hungry, Mr. Boynton. Oh, of course. I'll get my lunchbox out of the desk and... Well, that's funny. It, it's gone. Your lunchbox? My desk. <laughs> well, come on, Mr. Boynton. We'll go halvies on a glass of milk in the cafeteria. But but where in the world... I can't discuss it in detail just yet, Mr. Boynton, but I'm worried. I need your advice. Oh? Tell me, what should a person do if this person befriended another person, only to find out that that person may not have been worthy of the first person's faith, in view of certain occurrences which, although the second person couldn't definitely be accused of them, circumstances seem to point the finger of suspicion and... Well, just tell me this, Mr. Boynton. Uh, What, Miss Brooks? How did I ever get to be an English teacher? (laughs) Miss Brooks? Come on over here, Miss Brooks. I got an empty table. Oh, thanks, Walter. The cafeteria's pretty crowded today. Mr. Boynton's just getting me some milk. This chicken a la king is swell today. You ought to try it. It does look good. But, Walter, I'm surprised at your table manners. You're eating with your fingers. Everybody's eating with their fingers today. The silverware's all gone. What? (laughs) Yeah, including a fine set of Easterling knives and forks donated by the wife of Madison High School's founder, Mrs. Yodar Critch. (laughs) Well... She'll never miss them. She's been dead ten years. But this is awful, Walter. I can't help feeling it's my fault. Your fault? What did you have to do with it? I've got to tell somebody, and it might as well be you. Have you noticed the new custodian bustling around school today? Yeah, come to think of it, I have. He seems like a very industrious chap. He's industrious, all right. That's why I feel so responsible. Do you know where I met this gentleman? Where? In my kitchen icebox at five o'clock in the morning... Wasn't it awfully chilly? (laughs) This is no kidding matter, Walter. This Joe Phillips broke into our place this morning, and when Mrs. Davis and I caught him, he said he just wanted a meal. He seemed so sincere, I brought him down to school and got him a job. Gosh, Miss Brooks, you mean you talked Mr. Conklin into hiring a crook? At the time, I was convinced he wasn't a crook, but in view of the day's event so far, I am now convinced that in spite of his very convincing approach, I was prematurely convinced. This isn't one of my better days. Gosh, Miss Brooks, there's no reason for you to be so upset about it. Why don't we just call a cop and have him tossed into the pokey? Because we haven't any evidence, Walter. Besides, I'd like to get him out of here without Mr. Conklin's knowledge. I'll never hear the end of it if he discovers I've recommended a criminal. Well, there must be something we can do. Oh, you should have called the police last night when you had him dead to rights. Hey, wait a minute. I've got an idea. You've got to get him back to your house again tonight. 
Uh, have you got something you could lure him with? I like to think I have. <laughs> oh, but uh, his most vulnerable spot is his appetite. He'll eat anything, as long as it isn't fried in deep fat. That murders him. Great. Then all we have to do is drop a casual remark that you're having a big turkey dinner at your place tonight and that you're leaving the house right afterwards. Where am I going? To the show. The Baron of Arizona just came to town. Is he taking me? No, that's the name of the movie. Oh. Now, you tell Mr. Boynton about our plan and have him at your house tonight at 7.30 or so. A quiet, Walter. Phillips is coming over here. Now, remember, you know nothing. Right. Uh, well, good afternoon, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Phillips. This is Walter Denton, one of my students. Well, glad to know you, son. Enjoying your food? Oh, he's enjoyed every handful. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, won't you? Thanks. I'm kind of tired. I've had a very busy morning. Yes, I know. <laughs> of course, uh, I'm not too familiar with the job as yet. Don't worry about it. I'm sure you'll pick things up as you go along. <laughs> Conklin's expecting big things from me, I guess, and I'm going to do my best not to let him down, but after all, I only have two hands. If you had more, there'd be no school by now. <laughs> oh, and Miss Brooks, uh, didn't you have to see one of the other teachers about something? What? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, of course. Please excuse me, Mr. Phillips. I've got to see one of the other teachers about something. See you later, Walter. Bye. Now then, Mr. Phillips, you look to me like a man who likes to eat. I do my share of it. Yeah, me too. And if there's one thing I love, it's roast turkey. Say, now you're talking. There doesn't seem to be any room at the other table, so I'll have to join you, Denton. <laughs> oh. Hello there, Phillips. Uh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Is that all you're having for lunch, Mr. Conklin? A glass of milk and a donut? It's all I require, Denton. I'm on a diet. Yes, sir. Harriet told me about your salary check being held up, but if you're that class... Oh, I... quiet! <laughs> Say, uh, that must be why Miss Brooks didn't have anything in front of her just now. She can't afford to eat. Don't be silly! She's purposely not having any lunch because her landlady, Mrs. Davis, is roasting them a big turkey for tonight. A big turkey? <laughs> a big turkey? A big turkey. Well, it's almost eight o'clock. If he's coming at all, he should be here any minute. Uh, are all the lights out in the house, Miss Brooks? I just sent Walter to put them out in the kitchen and dining room. I also told him to leave the back door unlatched. I'm running out of windows. Oh, Miss Brooks, come here a minute. What is it, Walter? Look, on this kitchen table here, in this roasting pan. It's a cooked turkey. A beautiful cooked turkey. Oh, now, isn't that sweet? Mrs. Davis must have left it for me when she went to her sister's. Put the lid back on, Walter. Oh, this is great. Now we've got some real bait. Now, remember the plan. When we hear him come in, we wait till he's in the middle of the kitchen. Then Mr. Boynton jumps on him, I throw my belt around him, and you put the lights on, Miss Brooks. Right. Now turn them off, Walter. There. Gosh, it's sure dark in here. Well, mm. the darker the better. If we can get him by surprise... Shh, shh. Yeah. Quiet. Somebody's coming. I hear him. I see a flashlight. I should have told him the door was unlatched. <laughs> He's eating it. Geronimo! until I finished a drumstick. Mr. Conklin. Well, I, I just wanted to talk to you about something, Miss Brooks. There weren't any lights in front, so I thought I'd try the back way. Through the window? Oh, uh, well, that was an accident. But once I got the window open, I thought I'd come in and leave a note for you. 
and in what handier place than buried in the stuffing of a turkey? Uh, please, Miss Brooks, let's go into the living room and talk this thing over. Well, let's all go into the living room. We still expect company, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't always snag the right weasel the first time. <laughs> That's a switch. Somebody's at the front door. Coming. Hi, Miss Brooks. It's me. Mr. Phillips, what do you mean by sneaking in the front way? <laughs> I'm not sneaking in. I just came over to explain a few things. This I've got to hear. Come in. So there you are. Good evening, Phillips. Oh. Oh, I'm glad you're here tonight, Mr. Conklin. Uh, I missed you at school this afternoon, uh, and I was going to give Miss Brooks a message for you. What kind of a message, Phillips? Well, your daughter Harriet was very helpful today, sir. But when I told her to bring the silverware to the shop to be polished, she had it picked up a little too early, before lunch. Yes, yes, I know. That isn't the only mistake she made. While she was dusting, she put my watch and fountain pen in my desk, and I didn't find them till after school. But what about the desks and sewing machines and the typewriter that were missing? Oh, I just took them down to the cellar to repair them. They sure needed a good varnishing. So does my suspicious mind. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, I owe you an apology. And so do I, Phillips. Me too. Fortunately, we've got something in the kitchen that'll make us all feel a lot better. Suppose we start carving that nice roast turkey. Uh, hmm? Where do you keep your knives, my dear? <laughs> It came from the kitchen. Well, come on, let's investigate. Right behind you. Well, I should never have told Walter to unlatch that back door. Why, Miss Brooks, what's happened? Somebody swiped our turkey. <laughs> in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid... Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean. Free of loose dandruff. Glistening with sheen. Soft. Manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is Eve Arden. The Red Cross provides immediate help for victims of disaster, as well as long-term help. The rebuilding and repair of homes, extended medical care, and where needed, even the training for a new job. During 1949, almost 300,000 persons in over 300 disaster operations received vital Red Cross aid. This cost over six and a half million dollars. This year, when you contribute to the Red Cross, give generously. Help the Red Cross continue its good work. Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Bob Sweeney. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women 
that palm olive soap facials, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap. Each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun, too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW group. Void prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.